me and Eastland, we were both in the Navy. We worked at Camp Pendleton in California, and we worked on opposite sides of the clinic. So we decided to play basketball one day, and I told him I wouldn't give him my number unless he made a shot. So he made the shot, and I gave him my number, and then he called me the next day, and that's history. <laughs> uh, first pregnancy was pretty hard. I was really sick. When Emmy was born, she failed her hearing screen, her newborn hearing screen. She actually failed it three times. <laughs> so they did it three times because they were like, oh no, there's probably water in your ear. Ended up going to Children's after that and that's when she got her diagnosis. Um, that was hard. Um, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> when you have a kid, you don't expect there to be anything wrong. So it's hard. From there, we got sent to the specialty clinic, and after, she got a true diagnosis of moderate to severe hearing loss. Then we got referred to First Steps, and then through First Steps, they help us pick a facility to the girls to go to. And we toured a couple of them, and when we got to CID, there's no question to us, you know, where we wanted to be. Our schedule is designed to give children opportunities to practice their listening and spoken language skills in a variety of settings. There are times throughout the day when they are in a very small group receiving that direct instruction from a master's level teacher of the deaf. I don't hide ice cream. There's other times where we put them in groups with um, a few more children and they have to practice their conversational skills, vocabulary, and the syntax that they practiced in that structured setting. We support them with their structured language, speech skills, their listening skills, with a big emphasis on the language for play. Tell me. I want my shot. Sure. Emmy has grown leaps and bounds since starting with CID and even from when she was little. Like she got her hearing aids when she was three months old, so she was very tiny. But now that we've been with CID for as long as we have and she has her parent teacher people come into the home and help us. Even in the month that she started in CID, I've seen a tremendous amount more of speech and language and how she's pronouncing things since she started. And then Milo was born. There was a study done that said if your first child's born with this genetic mutation, that your second child would, is going to have the same amount or less hearing loss. It's pretty rare for them to have more hearing loss. We just were going to do hearing aids and everything was going to be fine and we were going to get to where we are now. And then she was profound. So the audiologist just looked at us and was like, there's nothing. So, that gets you. But in the back of your head, you know you have CID and you know they know what to do. Like, there's not any question. It's not just, here's your kid that has a hearing loss. Let's get them hearing aids and we're gonna do audiograms and we're gonna go to school. It's, it's the whole thing, so the emotional aspect, the physical aspect of needing help with kids at appointments. So my parent educator will come to the appointments with me and hold Mila while Emmy's in the booth and I have to sit there with her. Mila was had surgery two weeks ago, um, got implanted, now we're here two weeks later. Um, she's about to get activated today, so she'll get to hear her first sounds today. It's not necessarily to the level of normal hearing, but it's something. Like Myla, she's profoundly deaf, so she hasn't heard anything up to now, and today she gets to hear. Myla. Hi. Yeah. Can you hear us? What was that? Wow. CID means everything to us. They've given us the opportunity and resources for our girls, and that means the world to us. And without them, I don't know where our girls would be.